This is the Prosperity Kitchen Podcast and I'm your host, Gemma McRae. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so pleased to have you listen to my podcast and I did get my facts wrong only slightly. If you like what you hear and you've clicked subscribe, brilliant, ace, thank you so much. But I need you to do one more thing. Um, I need you to go back into iTunes and you need to search for my podcast again um, and leave a review. You can only, I think, leave a review if you search for a podcast again. A bit complicated, don't understand why, but that's how it works. So if you can leave me a review and a five star rating, it really, really helps to push me up the iTunes um, ranking list. So with no further ado, here's to the show. Enjoy. Today we have got an absolute corker. Well, well, they're all corkers, but this is a corker corker. I'm talking to a lovely, lovely lady called Elizabeth Kunker, and she is a body language expert. In fact, she wrote Body Language for Dummies. Now, if you're in business or well, actually if you're just a human being and you're interested to know um, or understand the body language of other people, then this podcast is for you. Or alternatively, if you're conscious of your own body language and perhaps you want to act more confident or come across as being more confident, perhaps you want to present better, perhaps you want to reduce your anxiety levels, etc., then Elizabeth explains how to use your body language to do that. So, with no further ado, I hand you over to Elizabeth Kunker and we're talking about body language. Enjoy. Good afternoon, Elizabeth. How are you? Gemma, I'm all the better for hearing your voice. Oh. How are you? I'm good, but I've just realised it's not afternoon for you, is it? It's what is What time is it in Florida? It is a little bit after 9am and it's sunshine and warm and life is good here. Oh, what's the temperature? Um, well, now I don't do Celsius, so okay. help me. Um, high seventies. Nice. I'm in a little t-shirt and a light skirt and flip flops. Nice, nice. Yeah, what do we How often are you in Florida? Uh, not nearly often enough. I come down about three times a year mm-hmm. and spend a few weeks here. And because old Mama Bear here is pretty clever, she bought a house, and when I'm not here. Then I rent it out as a vacation rental. Very astute. So if any of your listeners are interested, just tune in to Palm Beach Vacation Rentals. Is, Villa it, is, it, is it near a golf course? Oh, gosh, yes. It's Florida. Everything's near a golf course. Then my husband and I are interested. Just repeat that website again for the listeners. It's Palm Beach Vacation Rentals. Yes. Dot net. And the name of my house is Villa Halla, H-A-L-L-A. No, H-A-L-L-A. Yeah, you're confusing me now, but I did hear yeah. you and they've heard you. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, Excellent. I'm super, super excited about interviewing you. Um, and I'll tell the listeners why in a minute. But we, before we get into the details of exactly who you are and what you do, could you just tell the listeners a little bit about you personally? Sure. Yeah, when you asked me that, and I was thinking about it, where do I begin? <laughs> I begin with my childhood. My parents were divorced when I was young, and I only mention that because for those of listeners of yours whose parents were divorced, they know what I'm talking about. There's a certain impact that that has. Fortunately, I am married to the most wonderful man who lets me be the person I am and celebrates me for it. And we've been happily married for 32 years. I have two fabulous children, a son and a daughter, neither of whom are married. I'm desperate for grandchildren. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, you know, when I was first married, it was all very exciting. And then after a couple of years, I thought, now what? 
And my husband said, why don't you take your theater background, because I was an actor in a previous life, and put it into a business context, which I did. And it was teaching people how to make a presentation. And I began to get work. And then I began to get paid for my work, which was really cool. And then I thought, you know what? I really like this. I'm really going to make it into a business. And I did. And I've been doing it for oh, over 25 years. I've written four books. I've, I've got a great life. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we were just speaking off well, on mic, but we weren't record. Well, we were recording it, but the, the listeners won't hear it. And okay. um, the, your energy is phenomenal. It really is. You're so positive and full of life, um, which excites me greatly um, as a coach. Um, and I suppose what excites me even more is what you actually do. Mm-hmm. And what you're actually talking about on the podcast today is body language. Yes. Which I find super, super, super interesting. How did you get into that? In a previous life, I was an actor. Mm -hmm. And I learned from an early age how to read the signs and signals that body language was sending out. Even before that, I'll share with you and your listeners, my mother was schizophrenic. Mm. And my parents were in a very unhappy marriage. So as a little child, I could spot those signs and signals. Mommy's about to have a breakdown. Um, You know, somebody's about to slam their fist. So I learned uh, what the different gestures, facial expressions, movements meant, what the intention was, what the thinking and the feeling behind them were. And then I thought, well, put it into a business context. You know, as an actor, use the knowledge. And then when I got tired of acting, take the knowledge and progress it even further. Because, Gemma, my thing is helping people be themselves at their best. Yeah. So that. if tweaking their their gestures, their facial expressions, whilst staying true to whom they are, if that can help them communicate a little bit better, well, then I'll die a happy woman. Yeah, wow. I mean, so you're saying that initially um, what you did was was presentations, effectively. Um, You taught people how to give good presentations. Is that correct? (laughs) That's right. That's right. And it's evolved. Yes. Because you have written many books. Do you you want to hear the story behind how the business started? Because it's it's one of those just go for it stories. Yeah, no, no, no. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Okay. My husband came home one day and said, oh, by the way, dear, you're giving a talk at the local Rotary Club in about six weeks. And I said, well, am I now? What am I giving this talk on? And he said, oh, I don't know how to make a presentation or whatever. So I said, okay. So I put together a 20-minute presentation, and I had the old boys, and they were in those days all old boys, standing up on their feet, doing breathing exercises, articulation. Well, they loved it. So I began to get calls from other clubs. Would you do this for me? Would you do this? And then I got a call from an individual who said, I saw you at the Seroptimus Club. Would you do this for my company? And I said, well, sure, Brian. Um, And you realize this is my business. Gemma, I I didn't have a business. (laughs) But I figured if he wanted me, he could pay for me. And he said, oh, well, that's really interesting. What's the name of your company? Oh, no. Yeah. And and I said... um, Elk Associates. My initials are ELK. And and I thought, and, you know, other people. So Elk Associates. Oh, that's fine. How long have you been in business? Well, you know, two seconds. But I said, (laughs) oh, my gosh, Brian, I can't even remember. It seems like forever. So I ended up training over 350 of this man's associates, partners. Turned out he was a partner in one of the companies. I mean, one of the country's largest architectural firms. Wow. And, wow. And this is one of your and, first customers. 
And he was my first customer. And he would take me out for lunch once a year and we'd have a little talk on how things were going and whatnot. And after a couple of years, I said, Brian, there's something I have to tell you. <laughs> I said, you were my first. And he said, Elizabeth, I know. And yeah. it was the best deal I ever made. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how much to charge. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. So, so the point of that story, besides I just love it, uh, is go for it. Yeah. Just go for it. If somebody wants you, let them have you yeah. at your best. I love Don't that. just give yourself away. Do it. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> can we just start with the basics? And sure. it's probably a really obvious question, but I still like you to, to answer it. What is body language? Okay. Body language is nonverbal communication. So body language is the use of facial expressions, movements, postures, gestures to convey a message of thought and intention. Now, the person conveying the thought or intention may consciously be doing it or not consciously doing it. So it's important to watch someone's behavior so that you can respond appropriately. I'm going to give you another example. I was in um, a very heated discussion with several people the other day, and one of the men, who is a corporate litigator, so um, that that kind of places him for you, hmm. he, 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 the tension around his face, and he's quite overweight, and he was getting very red in the face, and I wanted to say to him, just breathe, yeah. breathe, it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he was on the other side of the table from me. So I thought, I'm not giving you any tips. Right? And at one point, I noticed the slightest, it's called a micro gesture. His arm pulled back, his fist clenched yeah. as if he were getting ready to punch. Wow. At which point I looked at, it was, a, nobody else would have noticed it. I was yeah. across the table from him and it's my business. Yeah. I made my eye contact that stronger and that deeper towards him. The message being with the expression on my face, don't even think about it. Yeah. And it's all without words. All without words. Wow. So yeah. That's so cool. you have to watch for it. And and you also I'm, I'm sorry to be interrupting Gemma, no. but it's it's important to know what the normal behavior from the person is also. Because sometimes crossed arms just mean the person's tired and they're feeling lazy. It doesn't mean that they're feeling mean and defensive. Usually crossed arms is a sign of holding back. But it's taking in all the clusters of the gestures and knowing the normal behavior of the person that you're dealing with. Wow, you've I, I can tell you've been doing this professionally for a while because you've just answered that so <clears throat> articulately. Uh, seemingly probably off the top of your head so you're saying that body language it's a facial expression it's a movement I didn't even think about movements actually when it came to body language um and it's posture and it's non-verbal yes and it's and it's how quickly you move to yeah. the person moves yeah. Are they somebody who moves really quickly or are they more slow so it's it's like watch the television with the sound turned off Yes. Okay. And that, that will help people develop their sense of body language. Yes. Okay. I mean, the study of body language, I assume, has evolved over the years. How accurate is body language, do you think? I believe body language is very accurate. Now, there's been some interesting research done recently on research that Amy Cuddy yes. conducted. Yes. yes. Power pose lady. That's right. Power pose lady. Fabulous. Again, TED Talk. If your listeners are interested, go to Amy Cuddy, C U D D Y. Go to her TED Talk because I don't care what the arguments are against her research. She knows what she's talking about and she's smoking hot. Yeah. Body language is very clear. Again, you have to 
understand the context. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, it, it's more than just a gesture, a movement. It's within the context of what's going on. So, for example, there is a researcher by the name of Albert Morabian, who is a professor emeritus at UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles. And his research uh, has been widely misquoted. And so I'm, I'm going to try and translate it for you in the most understandable way. Mm -hmm. He says, when people are talking about emotions, 55% of the message is delivered through body language, 38% of the message through the voice, and 7% through the words. So I'll give you an example. Because you, could, you all can't see me, you're going to have to take it through the words. Mm -hmm. I love you, Gemma. I love you, Gemma. I love you, Gemma. Yeah. Really? 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 How about, I love you, Gemma. Yeah, I prefer that one. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You got it. <laughs> so, again, <laughs> and I do, I really like you a lot. <laughs> I just think you're darling. Um, <laughs> so, again, it's. When I say nonverbal, it's not the words, it's the tone of voice and the way the message is delivered that gives you the real deeper meaning, understanding behind the message. Yeah. Okay. Um, how useful do you think understanding body language is for everyday life? Vital. Yeah, I'm getting that. <laughs> It's just vital. It's paying attention. Uh, yesterday, I was at the grocery store, and the man behind me said something along the lines of, don't worry, it's going to get better. And I, I, I realized that I was tense and, you know, trying to get my groceries on to the conveyor belt and get them packed and and I was feeling a little blue anyhow because it's something that's going on. And apparently everything on my, on my visage, from my face to my actions to my movements, showed this guy that Mama Bear here was in Not a happy. state. Yeah. Not happy. And I so appreciated that. One, that he was even paying attention. I felt quite flattered. And two, that he took the time to remind me that it would get better. Yeah. And it did. Did you smile back at him? Oh, yes. I, oh, I said, oh, my goodness, is it that obvious? Mm -hmm. You know, my hand went over my mouth like the kid stealing the cookie from the cookie jar. Whoops. <laughs> you know? And I said, is it that obvious? And he was really sweet. He was smiled, nodded his head. <laughs> so I laughed. And it felt great. And as I think about that story, I feel great, too. It was a good one. And it's so true, actually. I, I catch myself... Um, without realizing, I'll notice first of all that my shoulders are tense, mm -hmm. and maybe my face is is very rigid. The muscles are rigid, mm -hmm. and that's because I'm not happy. Or and it's not maybe conscious. It's suddenly, it's suddenly, I've suddenly become aware Good. that I'm rigid or I'm not happy, and it's it, and it it's my body leading me to the emotion it's, it's quite so I, I completely get what you're trying to say in a very un, 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 unarticulate way I get what you're trying to say um, you're being very articulate oh not as articulate as you I think well I again it's, it's my business it's my business yeah what you're saying is is that the emotions impact on the behavior and the behavior impact on the emotions it's circular Boom. so if if you find yourself if one finds oneself feeling just, oh, God, you know, what's the point of even getting out of bed? And you want to get out of that mood. I mean, sometimes we all want to hang out in there, oh, poor me, in that place. But it gets a little dull and boring after a while. Change your position. Change your body language. If you want to change your thoughts, your feelings, your attitude, change your body language. Yeah. I always and, say, and actually, sorry. Elizabeth, go on. Yes, go on. No, I was no, going to no. say, I did a confidence workshop last week with a colleague of mine, and we we actually showed that diagram, how your mood affects your physicality and how your physicality affects your mood. 
and act sometimes when you're feeling blue or you're not feeling confident it's act the way you want to feel and the emotions will follow that's the one absolutely yay you right first prize (laughs) thank you thank you this in the theater we call it act as if Okay. Act as if I felt confident. Act as if and and remind yourself, how did I behave? There must have been some time in my life when I felt confident. What were those feelings? What were those emotions? You understand that. You're a good coach. Yes. You keep this stuff going with your with your clients. And That's this good. this leads me to the next question. Mm-hmm. Very nicely. And the next question is, and this is very relevant to people in their personal lives, but particularly, I think, in the business world. What is the, what is the classic body language of somebody who is low in confidence, would you say? I would say that there are two classics. There is the one where the shoulders hunch forward, the head droops down onto the chest. We can all try it on right now where the body folds in on itself. Yes. You might be fidgeting. Then there is another one that becomes that passive aggressive behavior. The chest is thrust out just a little bit too far. The stance is a little too wide. The stride is a little too strident. So it's giving off that look of, right, I'm here, I hold this position, it's a little too much. Yes. And it's indicating that you're feeling a little, that one is feeling a little insecure. Okay. What about somebody who's nervous? Well, there's a lot of fidgeting going on. There was a great photograph of, oh gosh, it was years ago now, I'm wondering if it was Harriet Harman. She was Secretary of Education, I think. And a bit, the photo was she was seated at a table and there was no skirt in front of the table. So you could see her legs as well as the upper part of her body. Right. And, and she was in an absolute pretzel position. Her arms were twisted around her arms, right? They were just twisted around her arms and her legs were twisted around her legs. And she was under under fire I can't remember what the question was about it was a long time ago so when you see uh, was the question about feeling defensive I nervous it was about feeling nervous. nervous okay about feeling nervous so you'll fold in on yourself you'll start to to um um fidget so if you find yourself fidgeting clicking the pen taking it on and off put it down yes push it away from you Take your toys away. We tend to start playing with props. You're picking at your cuticles. You're aware of it. Stop it. Yes. Because it takes away from your power and authority. Watch the really powerful people in a room. Their gestures are few and they are contained. Yes. Wow. This is so powerful. Um, Who is, what is the body language of somebody who is defensive? again it's that closed if you think about closed and open positions that's a really good starting point as you well know so somebody's defensive usually the face starts getting tight yes and that means that the muscles around the eyes which i can never pronounce pr- properly so i'm not going to try but it's the muscles around the eyes and around the mouth that start tensing up and the, and the shoulders get tense, the whole body gets tense and closed. Okay. So closed posture really mm-hmm. is the key mm-hmm. here for the low confidence, perhaps nervousness, defensiveness. What about somebody who's lying? Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I loved asking this one. I really did. I think oh. I know. Could I could I oh. can I hazard a oh. guess? Hazard a guess. Lack of eye contact. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all I can think of. Just lack of eye contact. I always say that to my husband. They're lying because they're they're not meeting my eye. Am I right? Okay. In part. Okay. In part. I have. 
when my little boy, who's now a soldier, or he a soldier, he's an officer. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, it, 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 I say. Um, what does he do? Him. He's in in the Royal Engineers. He's a captain in the Engineers. And when I asked him, he doesn't tell me much, you know, as well they shouldn't. Mm. He said, "Don't worry, Mom. We build bombs and blow up bridges." Whoa. Okay, it's all right. Anyhow, <laughs> when my gorgeous <laughs> captain's son was a little boy, I could tell right away when he was telling me a porky because he'd look me dead straight in the eye. Oh, damn it. I got it dead. wrong. No, no, you didn't get it wrong. It's again, you know your husband. So you can spot the behavior earlier in this conversation. I said, watch for the clusters of behavior and also base on your knowledge of the person. Yes, you did. Yeah. Right. So looking people straight in the eye can be a sign of lying. Also averting. Oh, not me. Eye contact all over the ceiling, sky, floor, any place other than looking at you in the eye. So you have to watch for a whole series of gestures and knowing the person helps. Um, there's a really good book out by a guy named Joe Navarro, who is an expert in line. He worked for the FBI for many years, and he can give you much better information about line than I can. I don't mean to be giving away ba- uh, information, you know, business is what I mean. And uh, he he's really good on spotting liars. Joe I Navarro, say- sorry. Yeah, that's right. Joe Navarro. I can't remember the name of his book. And we can text back and forth and do whatever. Again, it is watch the overall behavior and compare it with what you know to be the, the person's normal behavior. Yeah. I saw somebody stealing something the other day. And I know her quite well. What? And her... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It can be dealt with. It, wow. I will deal with it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sensing. Where, where was it? Is it in a Oh, or? it's really unimportant and oh, I don't want okay. to be too personal about it. And uh, when she saw, she was quite tentative as she was walking up to this particular object. And normally she barrels into a room, right? And as I observed the change in her behavior, I thought something's going on here. Yeah. And then she looked around. Everything she did was tentative yeah. until she took the piece. And then she walked out of the room as if she owned it. Right. So out of character when she walked yeah. into the room, then totally in character when she left. Yes. Yes. Wow. And. If I hadn't noticed that tentative behavior, I wouldn't have noticed what she had done. She was behaving differently than she normally does. And that's your basis of all of this, really. It's it's to look at, because we're not professionals, you're saying, look at the, you've got to gauge it by how somebody normally acts. That That's how you're going to know if somebody's unconfident, if they're lying, if they're defensive, if they're nervous. Yes, and and also take in the the whole cluster of gestures too. Yes, as I said earlier, crossed arms does not necessarily mean you're cut off from someone. And if your arms are crossed, your head is bowed down, you're looking at the other person under frowning eyebrows. That's telling you you're pretty closed off to whatever this person is coming at you with. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'd love to have you so, with me in some meetings. I'd love to be there. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, well, I need to meet you. Um, how? Uh, yeah, can... we do need to no, meet. No, we, we do. No, yeah. I think I think you may be my new best friend. <laughs> oh, I, I love Bezzies. Yay. What a great oh, way for me to start my day. Um, how can the listeners adopt their body language to show... I said to the questions, confidence and positivity. And I suppose, again, it's both business life and personal Mm -hmm. life. What would Mm -hmm. be your tips, do you think? Okay. I'm going to take you through through an exercise. I want them to start off by placing their feet firmly 
and with their weight evenly distributed it between their legs, directly under their knees, under their hips, under their shoulders. Now, for some people, that might feel uncomfortable because some people take a wider stance. And if you're standing, you can experience widen your stance. And others take a smaller, more narrow stance, giving themselves a smaller foundation on which to stand. So get back to your neutral position. Then sense energy flowing through your body. A sense of energy going melting down your spinal cords. And I use the word melt rather than stick your shoulders back because that gets too tight, too tense. Mm. But if everything is melting and expanding, the energy melts down through your legs, through the ground beneath you. You're strong like an oak tree. And you're also flexible like a willow because you have shallow roots coming out from the bottoms of your feet. Remember, I was an actor, so this may sound a little odd to some of your listeners. No, it's brilliant. It's very descriptive. <laughs> Wonderful. Then, so you have the energy flowing down through your body, deep tap root to make you strong, shallow roots to give you flexibility. Then the energy comes up through your body as well, and it comes through your chest, not just sticking your chest forward, expanding your rib cage, filling your space so that even your back enlarges. Your shoulders are still melting down and you're proud. Your head is gently resting on a calm lake. It's not sticking your nose and your chin up in the air and it's not dropping its down on its, chi- on its chest, but you're just there resting gently hands by your sides or in the power position how are you feeling I, I, i'm feeling quite relaxed at the moment honestly good. good good because the more relaxed we are the stronger we are i've been working out a lot and i am finding especially in martial arts when you go with the energy that is coming towards you and throw it back rather than trying to fight it off right away that you become stronger. Yeah. Yeah. So allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. Again, another great TED talk, which I know you know. Brene Brown. Brown. Yeah. 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 And that's true. When we are open to adversity, we are at our strongest. I love that. So you're saying basically your body language will show confidence and positivity when you're actually relaxed yes which actually when i say it now sounds obvious but i'd never really given that any thought before Mm. brilliant yeah and 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 relaxed not slumped no not you know oh god i can't be bothered no just i'm a good person it's about giving yourself these messages too Gemma. you know i had a wonderful (sighs) friend who died in her late 70s, I mean, uh, late 90s. And every morning she would stand up and she would look in the mirror and she would pat her face and say, I am joy, I am love, I am beauty. And that was what she was. And it showed in the way she moved, in the way she thought, in the way she acted. Sounds like Louise Hay. Oh, I don't know Louise Hay. Is this somebody you should know? Yes. She she wrote the book You Can Heal Your Life. And oh. she's from San Diego. She was she's just recently passed actually. She was I think 95. Okay. Um but she she became popular in the well, her book became popular in the 70s and 80s. Okay. And she was very popular for for, for mirror work. So looking at herself in the mirror and telling herself, you know, I love you. Louise, mm-hmm. things like that. But, mm-hmm. no, you should, her book, is, it's like a rainbow. It looks like a rainbow. <gasps> I will get it. Louise Hay, yes. H-A-Y. I yes. will get it. Isn't this fun? We're just giving each other gifts. I love oh, this. Yes. I love this. Yes. That, in fact, it was that book that started me on my revolution, my personal revolution, as I call it, where mm-hmm. I gave up the career that I was doing to do what I'm doing now. And it was that book that was the seed that sowed that I sowed after reading that. So no, do oh. read it. Oh, how fabulous. Yeah. May I ask 
what were you doing before? I was, well, I still am. I'm a chartered surveyor, which is a property professional in the UK. But yes. I, was, I was working in the Middle East in shopping centres. Wow. And previous to that, I was in London working. So I was a, a shopping centre specialist. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but I just had, um, it was all career, career, career. I was slightly burnt out. And I realised, Elizabeth, that, no, I wanted to do something more. There was a different calling for me. I wanted to help people. And yeah. it was after reading that book that it all kind of started to click into place. Oh, it's just wonderful. So I, you, you buy it. Little, I will. I, I'm, I'm practically running out the door right now. <laughs> <laughs> With good body language. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were going to say something then. No, no, no. I was just saying, yeah, it's it's all positive. I, I, I'm running out the door with my chest up and my, <laughs> you know, big smile on my face. I'm feeling good. <laughs> um, if a listener needs to ace that job interview or presentation, mm -hmm. do you have any key tips to help them? Mm, yeah. I knew you would. Yeah, well, you know, again, this I cannot promise will win the person the job and it will win the person the respect of the person who's interviewing them. Okay. Look the other person in the eye, smile, show appreciation and deference. You're, you, you don't know how, what this person's life is like. What you do know is this person needs someone to fill a job and you're the one to do it you don't have to go in with great bluster it's go back to that yourself at your best you are calm you give a firm handshake you smile you nod you lean forward and and based on who you are it may feel a little a little slow down elizabeth mm -hmm. it may feel a little uncomfortable at first so practice yeah, Before yeah. a job interview, go practice. Practice shaking hands. Practice making eye, ca eye contact. And again, Amy Cuddy says we spend too much time hunched over our phones before a job interview. Gentlemen, go into the men's room. Girls, go into the ladies' room and adopt that big power position mm. where you put your hands up in the air in, in the YMCA position, yeah. right? Yeah. And you look at the mirror and you smile and you say, you are lucky to know me. Love I that. am a great person. Now, the you only need to hold that position for 15 seconds to start feeling it. This is where the Cuddy research began uh, being questioned because she would have the person, the two uh, subject. Minutes. Two minutes, yeah. yeah. That's, that's for me too long. I think you adopt that position for 15 seconds and you start feeling top of the world yeah. and happy to be where you are. Show people that you appreciate that, that their time yeah. by smiling and by nodding. And also when you walk out the room, make sure that you turn so that the last vision that the person interviewing has is of your face. Nice. Not your bottom. Yes, nice tip. Mm. Never thought of that before. Mm -hmm. and, and just so the listeners know, that, that Amy Cuddy pose is called the bear pose, isn't it, Elizabeth? Is that right? The bear pose. Yes, yes. Um, right. What tips would you give for presentations? <sighs> practice, practice, practice. Yeah, that's what I say. You know, I, well, I started telling the story, so I will tell it. I gave probably one of the worst presentations of my life recently because I didn't practice enough. They, and you're a professional. And I'm a professional. This is my job. I know better. And things were happening in my life. Boo, who, excuse, excuse, doesn't matter. You do it anyhow. You practice. Don't count on your personality. Don't count on past experiences. We're only as good as our current performance. So practice. Okay. I completely agree with that. We, we, mm -hmm. was, we said that on our confidence workshop last week. Because um, mm -hmm. often where confidence is needed, as you know, is presentations and public speaking. And um, funnily enough, my colleague, who's a psychologist, um, 
picked up on the Amy Cuddy bear pose. That was one of her tips. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's strange that you're mentioning that now as well. Well, it's not strange. It's just um, it just is validation to what yes. you're saying. And also, what I said, my biggest tip on anything to do with public speaking and um, presentations is is exactly what you just said. And I said that exactly like you did. Practice, practice, and practice again. Mm-hmm. And really prepare in advance, too. For every minute that you're speaking, you've got to count on a good hour of preparation. Yeah. So if it's a 45-minute speech, you've got to put in a good 45 hours of yeah. prep. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know it was that long, actually, but that, it does make yes. sense. It makes sense. It really does. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got to figure out who is your audience, what do they want to hear, what's important that they remember. Stick also to the rule of three. That's that's my big giveaway for you today. If So, for example, when we I, one of the exercises I use is I have my uh, client stand up and say, when I communicate, I am clear, confident, and committed, for example, okay? If they said, when I communicate, I am clear, confident, committed, courageous, uh, compelling, and and went on and not, well, it would be too much. It'd be diluted, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Clear, confident, committed. That's what you remember. So the rule of three. The rule of three. That's brilliant tip. Brilliant tip. Um, Are there any other ways aside from body language that can be used, do you think, to improve relationships or communication? (laughs) I'm laughing. Don't say hand gestures. (laughs) (laughs) How can we improve our communication? Is that what the question is? Yes, that, that that is as far far better the way you've said that yes how can we improve our communication understand the person with whom you're communicating respect that person treat that person with respect and your communication will become respectful and positive wow so treat the other person with respect and understand them (laughs) Yes, and understand them. So <laughs> I was recently uh, lost my dad. And no matter how old you are, when one of your parents dies, who you love very, very much, it's a very sad time. And one day I was having the right old boo-hoo, you know, <laughs> and, and bless him. My brother turned to me and he said, oh, just act normal. The reason, you know, and I looked at her and I, I went into coaching mode and I said, so help me understand the behaviors that you associate with normal. And of course he blew up because he was in mourning also. And that was the way he responded was because he was hurting too. And so if we can understand that we're not out here to destroy the other person to hurt the other person it's just to understand what it is that they're experiencing and how can you respond in a respectful way that lets you know that you understand yeah and I think that links to um when you're communicating with somebody it's to listen as well yes really listen to what the other person's saying it it, you know that's that's so much a better example (laughs) Really listen to what the other person is saying. What's the message underneath the words as well? And again, go back to your body language. How are they behaving? What's the expression on the face? What are the gestures? What is their breathing rate? Pay attention to that too. Is the breath, is the breath very shallow? That is a sign of nervousness. Mm-hmm. If, it, if you find yourself getting shallow and the shoulders rising up, Consciously change your breathing pattern. Go deep down to your core. Allow your diaphragm to move in and out, up and down. Oh, do you know what? I think you should do a relaxation audio. (laughs) Well, Gemma, we can talk after. Because I seriously think you could help me get to sleep. Crikey, it's very relaxing. (laughs) 
<laughs> I have been known to bore people to sleep. No, <laughs> no, it's just relaxing. If you could see my oh. body language now, you'd say I'm very relaxed. Um, oh. You have been wonderful. Can I ask you a few general questions? Please do. I ask all of my guests what their daily routine is and do they have any productivity hacks? Daily routine depends on where I am and, and what the day is. I yes. always make my bed. Yes. Again, you'd think all I do in my life is watch TED Talks. <laughs> and uh, there are some very good ones. And there's Admiral somebody or other, and again, we can get the name, who has given a brilliant talk about uh, a- a- achievement. And, and he says, start off by making your bed. Because you can always go back to it at the end of the day and say, I may not have accomplished anything else, but I got my bed made today. Um, When I am writing, I get up very early. I get up at about four. And that gives me a good three to four hours of uninterrupted time uh, before the phones start ringing and, you know, life kicks in. Yeah. So that's my routine when I'm writing. I exercise every day. And I feel so much better for it. So after making the bed, get down on the floor, do the push-ups, do the sit-ups, do the, you know, plank. It takes five minutes maximum while I'm watching CNN or whatever. Up, dress, walk the dog, come back, and by then it's time for somebody to look after me. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And what are my, what are the hacks? I, uh, I'm easily distracted. Okay. You know, especially if I'm working on something that's tough for me. So um, paperwork is really hard for me and I have to do it. I'll look out the window and say, oh, gosh, that rose really needs cutting. And I have had a couple of fabulous PAs who have been instructed not to let me leave my desk <laughs> until whatever I know I had a 16 year old working for me one summer and she was just adorable and I'd start to get up and she'd say Elizabeth have you finished whatever project it was that I was supposed and I'd say no and she'd say well and look at me she just would give me the look (laughs) that was enough to say sit down and do your job (laughs) so uh, I I'm easily distracted so how do you not let yourself be distracted I tell myself when I finish whatever job it is that I'm currently working on, then I can get up and cut the rows. Yes. So you got a little bit of a, a reward. Yes. Okay. Um, I ask all of my guests what book they would recommend. And it, can, it can be books, Elizabeth. It doesn't have to be book. It can be books. They recommend okay. the listeners to read. Well, let's start with the obvious. Any of mine, oh, including, yes. <laughs> including <laughs> uh, Body Language for Dummies, which is currently in its third edition, and I really want to get it in its fourth edition. There's so much fabulous body language going on out in the world right now. <gasps> uh, we've really got to capture it. So let's all intend that the for Dummies brand is going to come back and say, Elizabeth, we want the fourth edition. Oh, they're going to. They're going to. They're going to. Then I would also say body language, learn how to read others and communicate with confidence, Mm -hmm. which is another of my books. And also communication skills for dummies. It's really good. It's my book and I read it and I think, gosh, (laughs) well done, old girl. Um, Besides those three obvious choices, I would say... Go back to your childhood stories. Read Charlotte's Web yeah. by E.B. White. Charlotte the Spider and Wilbur the Pig, I get teary as I say it, mm. will teach us all more about love mm. than any other book we can read. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you know what? I haven't read that in a long while, actually. Oh, go back to it. Yeah. Go back to it. It, it always made me cry. Book. But, well, a good old cry is, you know, when my mother was passing, she made me read Marley and Me. Yes, the, book. the and, dog. And when I, when I got to the part of the, about that the dog was dying, I just closed the book and I said, Mother, you know how this story is going to end. I am not reading it to you. I will not read about this dog dying as I'm sitting here watching you pass. Yeah. And she's like, oh, please. Oh. <laughs> you know? 
Jay, you have um, me cry. Oh, dear gosh. Oh, a good old cry. Never hurt anybody. No, um, <laughs> I would also say, you know, sticking with the children's books, Dr. Seuss. You know, he Oh, the places you'll go, the things that you'll see. You know, wonderful stories that fill us with life and joy and the sense of possibility and curiosity. Read those. Okay, nice. Um, I'm very much looking forward to hearing your answer to the next question, which is, what is your life's philosophy? Be kind to one another. I wish I could claim that as my original line. It's Ellen DeGeneres' sign-off line at the end of her program. And it's, it's so true. Be kind to one another. We don't know everybody's backstory. No. And nobody can, can get angry at you if, you've, if you're being kind. Yeah, 100%. Well, maybe, they, you know, be kind to one another. That's my life philosophy. My mum always says that to me. Just be kind uh, to everyone. Um, I didn't realize Ellen said that at the end of her show, every show. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, be kinder to yourself. Yeah. Be kind. Love yourself. Yeah. You're fabulous. Yeah. It took me a long time. I think it taught me having children. When when my children look at me with appreciation and respect, I think, all right, because I think my kids are fabulous. They are. I mean, they're they're wonderful people. And I feel very fortunate to be their mother. Oh, they're very fortunate to have you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Finally, where can yes. the guests find out all about you? Can we have all of your social media, your websites, everything? Oh, golly. Oh, gosh. Okay. Go to Elizabeth Lindsay Kunka, K-U-H-N-K-E, on Facebook. On Twitter, go to Diamond Polisher. And the reason I I took that name is because one of my clients said to me, you're you're like a diamond polisher, Elizabeth. You just take this rough material and you sort of smooth and sharpen it a bit. And and then we all become little diamonds. And I thought, oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love that. Um, So those are, and then my website, all the W's, Kudenka. K-U-H-N-K-E, communication.com. Now, do you take clients, because you're based in America and Switzerland, aren't you? So you're, mm. but do you deal with clients all over the world over Skype? Or how, how does it work if somebody wants to work with you? How, yeah, how does that work? Well, if somebody wants to work with me, call me, email me, let's figure it out. I'm uh, I'm at that point in my life, Gemma, where I I've decided to go with the flow and and not say okay you have to do this we have to do it this way we have to do it the way that it works best for the person who calls who yes. reaches out okay. and then we make it work. Okay. Well, you have been absolutely wonderful. You are absolutely wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Gemma, thank you so much for inviting me to be on your program today and to share what I've learned in, in life. And I feel very, very fortunate to have had this opportunity. Thank okay. you. We, we thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for listening to the podcast, everyone. If you'd like a chance to win a free 60-minute coaching session with me, Gemma McRae, please click subscribe on iTunes and simply drop me an email on gemma at prosperitykitchen.co.uk to let me know. And I will pick one subscriber every month for a free 60-minute coaching session. If you'd like to find out more about me generally, go to my website, which is www.prosperitykitchen.co.uk or follow me on social media. Facebook, I'm at Prosperity Kitchen. Twitter, I'm at PKL Coaching or Instagram, I'm at Prosperity Kitchen. Ciao for now. 
and tune in next week. La 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 la